Tonight, a water crisis at SUNY New Paltz. Also, information on the coronavirus. And later, severe flooding in parts of the UK. Hello and welcome to MCTV's news update. I'm Savannah Trimble. And I'm Rafael Beretta. Here are tonight's top stories. In West Point, California, 440 pounds of marijuana were found inside of a building. A man named Zhang Li was running an underground illegal marijuana business and is being held on multiple charges with $100,000 bail. There were also about 1,500 marijuana plants confiscated. The building in which the marijuana was growing was deemed unsafe to enter due to dangerous electrical modifications. Students of SUNY New Paltz returned to classes this morning after a water contamination issue closed the school last Tuesday, after complaints about the taste and smell of tap water were made last week. The village of New Paltz Public Works Department issued a do not drink advisory. The school mandated all students leave campus and return Sunday. Governor Cuomo, uh, Governor Cuomo's office sent over 40,000 gallons, 40, gallons of fresh water to New Paltz. The advisory was lifted Friday after systems flushing and further, further testing by New York State Department of Health. Tenney Stadium, right here at Marist College, has been named one of the best places to watch college lacrosse. Lacrosse Insider has it ranked between Penn State's Panzer Stadium and Maryland's Maryland Stadium, according to the article. Tenney Stadium is a hidden gem that has 5,000 seats and a VIP area. The views of the Hudson also cannot be beat. The central location on campus is perfect and allows for the music from the stadium to be heard as students walk, to walk through campus. It is also easily accessible and easy for students to get to. If you want to watch a lacrosse game from one of the best places to watch, you can get down to Tenney Stadium on Tuesday, February 18th for a men's game where Marist is hosting Army's West Point. From the Seton Hall Pirates to the NBA All-Star Game, here is Jack Weinberger with this week's sports. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's sports report. I'm Jack Weinberger. Starting on the college hardwood, the Seton Hall Pirates, the 10th ranked team in the nation at the start of last week, dropped both their games this week to Creighton and most recently at Providence Saturday night in front of a sold-out Dunkin' Donuts Center. Alpha Diallo scored a career-high 35 points to lead the Friars and cut Seton Hall's Big East Conference lead to just one game, with five games remaining before the conference tournament in the Garden. Kevin Willard, the head coach of the Pirates, said the attitude around the locker room right now is not good, and that has to change in order to get back on track. A team who had a three-game lead just one week ago now has Creighton and Villanova breathing down their neck, just a game behind in a conference that's looking to get six bids to the dance in a few short weeks. The disappointing season continues for the Marist Red Foxes men's basketball team as they dropped a close one at Iona on Sunday afternoon to fall to 6-17 and on the season. Meanwhile, it's been a totally different season for the women as they clobbered Siena yesterday by a score of 78-55. to Rebecca Hand matched her career high at 32 points, shooting 14-17 of from the floor. Staying on the hardwood, Sharif O'Neal, son of NBA Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal, told Sports Illustrated he will be transferring to his father's alma mater, LSU. O'Neal was the number 32 recruit in the 2018 Top 100 class. He played in 13 games this past season for UCLA before announcing he'll be transferring to the Bayou. Over to the pros. Last night, the NBA All-Star Game took place in Chicago as Team LeBron defeated Team Giannis 157-155 in a thriller. Kawhi Leonard went for 30 on eight three-pointers and became the first ever recipient of the new Kobe Bryant MVP award. Let's go over to the diamond. Spring training has begun and we're less than two months away from opening day. Earlier this morning, the Atlanta Braves extended the contracts of manager Brian Snicker and GM Alex Anthopoulos. Anthopoulos will now be the team's president of baseball operations and general manager through 2024, while Snicker's contract runs through 2021. Good stuff coming up this weekend, headlined by a noon tip-off Saturday from Baylor University, as the number one ranked Baylor Bears play host to the third ranked Kansas Jayhawks down in Waco. That's all for today's sports. I'm Jack Weinberger. In Cameroon, 22 people were killed by armed men, according to United Nations officials. The attack happened on Friday in Natumbo, a village in northwestern Cameroon. Security fighters searched nearby villages for separatist fighters, burning houses and killing civilians, including 14 children. The conflict has raged since 2016, when the English-speaking majority began to protest against the French government there. United States President Donald Trump has removed Cameroon from a trade deal due to human rights violations by the Cameroon military. 
14 of the passengers on the Diamond Princess ship who were finally evacuated have po tested positive for coronavirus and are now being flown back to the United States. The boat was docked off of the Japanese port city of Yokohama, and those who were on the boat and American were flown to a U.S. military base. The decision to allow those who tested positive to fly back was made, and there was a special area on the plane for those to go who had tested positive or had shown symptoms of the virus. Even those who did not test positive must remain in isolation for 14 days, and the military bases will be providing them with the housing. There were a few people who refused to travel and preferred to stay quarantined on the boat in Japan. Residents of the United Kingdom face strong winds and flash flood flooding for the second week in a row. Storm Dennis brought wind gusts of 91 miles per hour and two full weeks of flood warnings. The south of Wales has been hit the hardest, facing life-threatening conditions. British Airways and EasyJet canceled over 230 flights on Saturday. Storm Dennis arrives two weeks after Storm Chiara, which grounded over 100 flights to Frankfurt, Germany, and Amsterdam in the Netherlands. It looks like spring weather is on its way. Here's Claudia Rufa with this week's Highs and Lows Report. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Highs and Lows Report. I'm Claudia Rufa. This past weekend, we have been experiencing some freezing winter temperatures. This past Saturday was partly cloudy with a high of 30 degrees and low of 21 degrees, while this past Saturday was partly sunny with a high of 45 degrees and a low of 27 degrees. This week we are looking at partly cloudy skies with a high of 45 degrees and lows around 15 degrees, with rain expected on Tuesday. Before we take a closer look at the forecast, a severe weather outbreak has rattled the southeastern United States this past week, producing nearly 200 incidents of severe weather. More than a dozen tornadoes have come through the southeast, part of a multiple-day outbreak that left a trail of destruction over the south. These storms are not about to end just yet because a new round of storms is forecast to start from the Florida Panhandle to southeastern Virginia on Thursday. Now focusing on weather on our neck of the woods, today we reached a high of 44 degrees. Today's sunrise was at 6.49 a.m. and sunset was at 5.30 p.m. Tonight we are looking at a 30% chance of snow at 1 a.m. with a low of 27 degrees with winds northeast at 5 miles per hour. Looking ahead for tomorrow, we are seeing cloudy skies with a high near 43 degrees, a 70% chance of precipitation, snow early in the day becoming all rain after 10 a.m. Now looking at seven-day forecast, we are looking at more sunny skies at the end of the week with temperatures in the 30s and 20s range. For this weekend, we are looking at partly cloudy skies on both Saturday and Sunday with a high near 45 degrees Saturday and a high near 47 degrees on Sunday. So heading towards spring-like weather for this week and coming ahead. Well, that concludes our weather report for this week. I'm Claudia Rufa. Thank you. On February 9th, a five-year-old boy named Noah Woods saved his family from a house fire. After waking up to flames in his bedroom that were caused by an electrical circuit, he sprung into action, grabbing his two-year-old sister and dog and escaping through the window. He then ran next door to his uncle's house, where the rest of the family inside the burning home were alerted of the danger. Due to Noah's quick thinking, the entire family survived and only faced minor injuries. The family is now without a home, but eternally grateful for their brave son, saying, if it wasn't for Noah, we may not be here today. The past three seasons of Stranger Things have been a hit, and the end of this past season, we were left with a cliffhanger. Now, if you don't want any spoilers, you should skip this news story and get on Netflix ASAP and catch up. Hopper was presumed to be dead, and fans were devastated. Well, on February 14th, 2020, the Stranger Things Instagram released their first promotional video for Season 4. At the very end, they show Hopper still very well alive, but as a prisoner in a chain gang. Fans immediately took to social media to express how happy they were. Well, for the most part. Some fans felt as if they only brought him back because fans wanted him and that it wasn't realistic. If they could bring Hopper back, why couldn't the beloved Barb have made a return? I don't know about you guys, but I am anxiously awaiting the return of Stranger Things 4. From the Academy Awards nominations to Billie Eilish's new track, here is Alex Morales with this week's entertainment. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's entertainment report. I'm Alex. 
The 2020 Academy Awards dominated entertainment buzz this past month with a number of well-deserved and sometimes surprising wins. The movie 1917 won three awards while some of this year's hits like Ford vs. Ferrari, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Joker won two each, including a Best Actor Award snag for Joaquin Phoenix's explosive performance as the Joker himself, giving a heartfelt acceptance speech delving into a variety of topics, including alleged animal cruelty in the dairy industry and a tribute to his late brother, River Phoenix, on stage. But the absolute standout film at this year's ceremony was, of course, Parasite, sweeping the show with four awards, including Best Original Screenplay, Best International Feature Film, Best Director for Bong Joon-ho, and most spectacularly, Best Picture of 2019. The runaway success of this South Korean movie that's become a global phenomenon broke language barriers and made history as the first ever non-English film to win Best Picture. In other news, as a loving Valentine's Day gift, Netflix released the first look at season four of its hit show, Stranger Things. The next installment of the throwback horror adventure is likely slated to premiere late this year. Fans rejoiced when the teaser hit the internet as it confirms David Harbour will return once more to play beloved Hawkins cop Dennis Hopper after his seeming sacrifice in last season's finale. Besides Stranger Things, Harbour has a big year ahead of him as he's also joining the largest movie franchise ever to co-star with Scarlett Johansson in Marvel Studios' Black Widow in theaters May 1st. Finally, singer Billie Eilish has recently released her new track, No Time to Die, which is of course the title song to the upcoming James Bond film of the same name and Daniel Craig's uh, last go around as James Bond, the star, role, the star role. It's coming to theaters April 10th, 2020. This song marks uh, Billy as the youngest artist ever yet and possibly forever to perform a Bond theme song and it's already received almost 25 million hits on YouTube. She is slated to perform the song live for the first time at London's Brit Awards on February 18th, ahead of her North American tour beginning March 9. Billie Eilish also performed a cover of the Beatles song yesterday at the Academy Awards this month during the In Memoriam segment. Well, that concludes the entertainment report for this week. Once again, I'm Alex. Thank you for turning in. On February 17th, residents in Plymouth woke up to find that the historic Plymouth Rock and other monuments had been vandalized, writing in graffiti. Many of them illegible covered the landmarks, and some of the messages that are legible include numbers and obscene messages to law enforcement. Police are searching through video surveillance tapes in hopes of catching the vandals, but there are no suspects as of yet. Additionally, this act of vandalism has occurred on the year that the Plymouth's is commemorating the 100th anniversary of landing the Mayflower. Samsung has debuted its new flip phone this past week. The Galaxy Z Flip is priced at over $1,000 and has already gotten rave reviews from its first customers. This new phone design can stay open when it is half folded, which means that you can place the phone down and it will not immediately shut. You can also take photos from a flat surface. It also comes with bumpers to prevent the phone from closing too hard and breaking the screen. I'm a Samsung user, but I, I'm not too keen on folding my phone in half. I'm yeah. a little skeptical of that personally. Yeah, I'm an iPhone user, but I don't know how I would feel if they just like suddenly were like, we're back to flip phones now. I mean, everything circles around, right? That's, that's how trends true. go. That's true. Well, that's all we have for you tonight. I'm Savannah Trimble. And I'm Rafael Beretta. Thanks for watching and have a good night.